Come and get started on a new mission, mission. a new direction, direction. direction, a new intention. intention. Welcome to 5.8G Alive at Connections 50 Plus. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, catering to all your prospects in the third act of life. Economic well-being, well-being. social gratification, gratification. personal fulfillment. fulfillment. Join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Connections 50 Plus Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on Gael the Caribbean. Hi, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Connections 50 Plus 5.8 G Alive. I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, one of the co creators of Connections 50 Plus. And as usual, with me on the show is my colleague. Hi, and good evening, everyone. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite, one of the other co creators of Connections 50 Plus. Jen, last week we were so busy talking about insuring and stuff like that. We forget to wish Trinidad a happy Republic Day. <laughs> So I am hoping you all enjoyed your Republic Day. For me, it was a nice, quiet day. Actually, I didn't do much. Um, I did listen to some of the, you know, they had shows for Republic Day, and I did listen and enjoyed. So, yeah. So I hope you all had a great Republic Day. Yeah. 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 And Jennifer, I want, I want to make a point, because, again, we and our cohorts, we have to understand our purpose and you know i always boast and brag that we are the cohort that has made this great world the way it is the good and the bad we have to take it but you know a lot of people don't understand the significance or the importance of republic our republic holidays um they get independence and the parade and we did a great job of taking us from emancipation to independence and permission. But if we understand that permission that we give ourselves, I think it's so aligned with our nation becoming a republic. Because even an independent country, you're independent in that you have your navy, your, your army, and, and you could have your currency and so on. But your laws the things that rule you, guide you, determine what permissions you have or not, are still to be vetted by whoever your original owner is. And for many of us, it was the British. But when you become a republic, your head of state is no longer his or her majesty, but it is your own president. And you really can then, as a country, as a society, decide what direction you're going in, what laws, and you really become grown up, as it were. You know, so I think as we celebrated our Republic holiday, we, our country gave itself permission to chart its course and chart its destiny. But I think not many people understand that as the symbolism symbolism of the Republic holiday. And I think it has a lot of bearing on us and our lives. So while independence has its flourish, I, I really I really like the Republic Day holiday for that reason. Well, Terry Ann, thanks for reminding me of this on that. As you're quite right, you say Republic Day is it's not a day that we celebrate in a big way. So the the purpose, the meaning is lost on many of us. Your head of state the... is your own, the president, before it was the queen. <laughs> Fine. Um, but this week, the week has been very exciting to Terry Ann because as as you all know. This we launched our upcoming, you know, series for you to write your biography, Scribe with Tribe. So we were able to really stop the promotions. You would have seen our presenter, Dr. Lynette Tyson, Noel 
share what it would be all about. So there's a lot of excitement in the air. And, and I just love it. And, you know, so we thought also it worked on the first, the first of October. So that's, that was Monday day. That the internet was the international day of older persons, and it's the international day of older persons. But of course, we look in this is we celebrate in right through, we are in the third stage. So for us, it's not just a day, but it's our life, <laughs> you know, it's a celebration of our life. And the team was aging with dignity, and I felt it just fell into what we are doing nicely. And I said, the importance of strengthening care and support system, which is what we are all about. So our for October, we celebrating our life journey. That's that's our team for the October month. Celebrating our life journey, celebrating our experiences, celebrating our achievements. Because I have found Terry Ann many times. We don't dwell on, on all the achievements and all the happy times and all. Because listen to me, we are 50 plus, you know. So I had 49 past years. You want to tell me there's nothing in those years for us to really celebrate and share with our others and tell our stories. So we October is the man for us to do that. So if for those who have been doing it before, please go back. You must have some really great stories that you would want to share. And this is what we decided that, hey, this is a month. We are encouraging you all to come write your story, write your autobiography. We have an expert because many of us may have thought, that's a great idea, you know, I would love to do that, especially when we see others doing it. You know, you would read it, and I'm talking about the international ones. Huh? So you heard Oprah, that there's, uh, you know, we have Kamala Harris, that everybody, and you say, well, this is it. Nancy Pelosi, so, the first Supreme Court judge, everybody has written a book. <laughs> and they said in the book. And, and it's, it shows that what they're doing, they're telling your story, and in telling your story, you don't have to publish it, huh? but the excitement of writing your story and like someone who called to register told me it's a way of healing. They see it as a way of healing for them. As they write, it, it's a healing and they feel like they will feel that sense of happiness. Just talking about it, they say, you know, they're very excited to do it. Yeah. And this is, so we encourage you all to come on board. Yeah. And Scrap Jennifer, I want to say yeah. something that you always say and we've, we've been discussing it. Our cohort, our generation, we came up in an era where talking about yourself and talking about your achievements was seen as being boastful, as being arrogant, and it was seen as something negative. So I think many of us are just so uncomfortable Talking about ourselves, and you know, it's a kind of fight internal fight because there is such a great story to tell that can be inspiring, that can be motivating. You know, they, they say in the Bible story, a candle is not a light is not put under a bushel, it's not put under a pot, it will out. You have to put it up on a hill where it can be seen. You don't know who you will inspire. But somehow we we think we're not worthy, we we shy, we are afraid, we're not confident. But I think that belongs to a way bygone era. And we owe it to future generations to let them know what's possible. Yeah, that's why we were called like secret agents, the secret society. Because of that same reason, and Terry Ann, especially I know, I know I always talk about my Europe. Um, we always don't blow your trumpet, don't let nobody know that business. Because if you tell them your dreams, if you share your dream, it won't come true, you know, all this nonsense. But you know what has happened? You know, we, I, I see it as if we don't share our stories, we depriving that generation 
that same generation, we want to, let me say, pong and say, they're not doing this and they can't understand, etc. That they don't know. They don't know, right? They see us successful. They're not sure how, because many of us too, they didn't see how we did it because we didn't share our journey. You know, we skip over. So we may just, you know, we achieve. We may have become a professional in whatever way. So they know us there and they don't know the journey, the actual journey. Because Terry and we're not sharing. Other thing we don't want them to know, the the bad aspect. I want to say the bad aspect, our failures. But if they don't know, if we don't share, we did it this way, it didn't work because of X. And as a result of our lesson there, this is what we did. And that is so. So we have the steps. It's a journey. And let me tell you, for us to be understood at stage, it was a great journey. Exactly. That story, let help that generation. You know, as I say, it don't have to be published, but it's just sharing. And as Dr. Um, Tyson Noel said also, depending on what part we take, depending on what aspect of our stories we want to share, we can bring in our, our children, our grand, and share. You know, let them help us and say, you know, we really didn't know why you did so and so. We always wondered why you did this or what happened to you or so and so. So listen, this is our time to come out of that, come out of the secret service. <laughs> Do it with a purpose, eh? Terry Ann, it's just not remove that. We're not boasting. We're not blowing our trumpets. All these negative aspects we thought that if we share a story of success, yeah. that is what it means. No. Why are we sharing the story is to help too. And I'm saying help. You share the story. You don't know who will read it and it will inspire. Right? It's not that you're going and line up people and say, hey, you all read it because you're all going in profession and I want you to read it. No, no, no. It's not a lesson. It's not a lesson. Some, if they choose, especially our loved ones, those who care or those who see us as a mentor, would read and say, oh, that is what she did. Oh, that's how she grew up. Oh, she was able to overcome that, he or she. So this is my take on it. And I really hope that, as you said, those who had, I would say, hang-ups about doing it, a, is it, it would be lovely. It would be fun. You're going to be laughing at you, yourself. I'm thinking of things that I want to write. And I, I just smile and say, wow, they will say, I can't believe this. Mm -hmm. You know? And Jennifer, you know, there's another part of it. Because even as I think about my road through success in the corporate private sector in Trinidad and Tobago, this image was not there. And it's not that it was a smooth journey. You faced all kinds, you faced prejudice in many different areas. I was a southerner, I was black, I was female. I didn't go to the, the schools. I was not a member of anybody's social club. So what are you doing there? And there was a lot of pushback. And very often many people opt out of even thinking that they could have ambition yes. to go there because they just society makes them feel that it's not worth it, the struggle not worth it. But unless you see somebody else went through and they're fine, <laughs> you you give up. And too many of our young people, I think, are opting out of ambition because they're not hearing the stories or seeing the stories of people like them who've done it to give them fuel. And I think that that's another reason that we really, really have to, to, to write those stories down. <laughs> let, let this story out. Yeah. yeah. Let them know more about what you did. It's because we want to, uh, we are talking about helping with the community building. We are talking about giving support. And not only time the support is to go and teach. We we somehow our cohort, as you see, we like to give lessons. <laughs> we like to 
tell them how to do things. But when we really share the story of our life, because they're going, this is a different time for them. Eh? So we don't expect our time, how we did it then, we are not saying this is how you must do it. But they can pull from it and learn from it and know what not to do. <laughs> you know, the pitfalls that they could avoid to really enjoy their own journey. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this is really, I, I call it, I refer to it from, from some reading that I was doing on, on June and on autobiography. And I found referring to it as your legacy story. Also, it is an autobiography you're doing, but I like the legacy story, you know, spin on it because really talking about what you have gone through. Yeah. yeah. And for me, it's my greatness story because I am great. I did such great things. And it's, I need to have it documented so that you know, it will be there. I need to get it out of me. <laughs> and it can be shared. But Jennifer, as we go along that and we celebrate the Republic holiday, we have we have greatness that has been recognized nationally. And we have a good time today. So who do we have on today? We have our special, our one of our favorite presenters that you all know. Dr. Jennifer Rouse, who has been awarded on Republic Day. She got the award of the Hummingbird Medal Silver. Oh. And Terri-Ann had put uh, the handle to her name. So we're going to introduce terri with the handle to her name. Yeah. She is Dr. Jennifer Rouse, HMB. <laughs> and for us seniors, we need to understand that a lot of the benefits and privileges that we enjoy today have come from policies that she actively created in the Division of Aging. So we are really, really honored to celebrate Dr. Rouse's HMB, <laughs> the conferral of that national award, by having her as our guest today. So let's hear Dr. Rouse. <laughs> Hi everyone. Remember, we mentioned to you that we have in this really special guest. And when you see who it is, you know it won't be any surprise to you. I am just smiling, and you see Terry Ann with a big broad grin on her face, too. We are so proud and honored to have, let me say, our own. I, I want to say our own. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Rouse, who you all know very well because she has been one of our presenters from, from inception and always support and encourage us, you know, with what we do. And, you know, Dr. Rouse, let me shout out special congratulations, not just from the 5.8G tribe, from all our, you know, audience, all those who are looking on for your recent award you receive on Republic Day, Trinidad and Tobago National Award, the Hummingbird Award, Silver. Wow, we have to give us a red clap. Oh, we don't have anything to post now, but we will talk to you after. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, welcome again. And you know, you know, Jennifer, we, we are Jennifer, you have to yeah. put a handle on Dr. Rouse's name. Yes. Is Dr. Jennifer Rouse, HBF. HBM. Oh, oh, HBM. Oh, how could I forget HBM. that? HBM. <laughs> HBM. So yes. when you put in, and that is so, so critical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now. yeah. So when they say, put a handle on your name, this is a very sturdy handle. It's a representative handle. So Dr. Jennifer Rouse, HBM, Hummingbird Medal. <laughs> you need to see a little close-up of that medal too. So you already get that close-up of the medal. Yes. Sure. So, you know, we are very happy to, Dr. Rouse, to, to have you with us, especially for the month of October. Because this month of October, you know, 
Connections 50 Plus on our show too. We want to really celebrate all of us on the third app stage. Um, we are celebrating in this month of October, you know, our life journey, celebrate our life journey, encouraging us the five point eight. she tried to celebrate our life journey, our experiences, our achievements. I mean, it's just great to have reached on this stage and to have you here. And we also know we are celebrating this month. Um, you know, it's the month for the Older inter um, International Day of Older Persons with the team aging with dignity. And this is, you know, I will let you share with us how you feel about receiving your award. Tell us a bit about your journey, why it is so deserved, this award that you have received, why we're always so happy to have you here sharing with us. So let me stop talking with all this excitement and have you, you know, just share with us. Tell us, you know, yes. a bit about your, your journey. My journey, greetings one and all. All of you, as, as Jennifer said earlier, you all know this face. And I wouldn't preface it by saying this old face because you know, <laughs> you all will correct me immediately. And of course. You're not get, growing old and getting old. No, no, no. Because that is going on on the inside. But what you present is how we feel. I was just looking at Jen's face, her facial expression, just in inter, inter, um, bringing me and introducing me. And her whole face was a glow. She couldn't see it, but we were seeing it. I mean, she didn't know what words again to use to describe. And, and that is who we are. That is our essence. Our essence is joy. Our yes. essence is joy. However, there's a saying I always try to let people remember, freedom. Now, freedom comes with this joy because you just free, you just feel unencumbered. You just feel spontaneous. You just feel to do things like you live on flow. You know, whatever comes, you could meet it because knowledge like how all three of us we are seniors yep we are older persons we are not the elders yet the elderly are from 85 and over you yet we try to to, to use the, the term interchangeably no you have to earn being an elder mm -hmm. that's when less really means more mm -hmm. less talk more observing more witnessing hush Hear the silence. Hear your thoughts. See how crazy they may be going and saying, we're going with this. No, no, bring it back down to now because now is all we have. Yep. Now is all we have. Now I'll give you that little synopsis to start with. Eh? But it requires work, but not the work we knew in an office, taking instructions. And listen now, I was just given, a, for instance, and I will give this as a snapshot before, almost like the epilogue before we go back. Yes. One of my compliments from a former board member said, you know, she, she, um, she was felt, feeling so proud and, and she was so, um, she loved my outfit. Good. And as soon as she said that in the message and I replied, I said, well, I will give you your morning chuckle. How it came, because I'm going now on the outfit eh, that she, she yes. saw. Okay. I said preparation when one is in the 70s and going up. It starts from earlier. As a matter of fact, it starts from 45 really. Eh? But <laughs> we're going up. Those are the younger ones that want to come in when they see how much we enjoy ourselves. But from 50 going up, you have to take you have to start looking at things differently because the body the metabolic process is changing things that, that you used to gallop and do or spontaneously no you had to check yourself so this was my reply to her not necessarily ad verbatim i say but it will be a morning chuckle mm. first the i know the outfit that they were talking about mainly was the top that i had on mm. yeah. i said that was a what could be called a poncho or a cape 
it had no sleeves. For me to be pulling, yeah. adjusting, <laughs> you don't know if the thing right, no. You could move your hands anyhow because underneath was a mere camisole, a fitted camisole. You hear what put that there? meaning? It mustn't be a 10 or a 12 or whatever, whatever size fits you comfortably. Uh -huh. Put that on. Good? So you're free of that fidgeting. You, you relax because this is an auspicious moment. All different things could happen, you know. You could break out in sweat and, and nervousness, but you have to keep calm. Then I am going down my old, and I put old in inverted commas, my old trousers that I used to go to work in. I laundered it because it was the exact black that would go with the top. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to, because they had shades of black. So I used that. I wanted them to know that this wasn't like I had to go frantically in a boutique to get a whole do-over. No, 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 no. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Then all the accessories I'd already had and used. Cost effectiveness. Low maintenance. Because remember, most of us on fixed pension and everything else is added. Then I remember... <laughs> I say, wait a minute. I wonder what flooring they have. Just in case of in case city, I'm looking for a wedge slipper sandal. Mm -hmm. No heel, no stiletto or high heel. And I was spot on because as we were seated and I looked at the stage, which is higher than we are seated there because you have to go up. I looked to check the seat had a railing. It had. And when I got on the stage, you could see your face in the wooden floor. Well, I would have gone skating. <laughs> also, the wedge slipper sandal, I never we wore one where only the big toe goes into the loop for the big toe and a clasp over me instead without a buckle or a clasp. So I practiced home before all in my drawing room. Before I got up on that stage, yet I still walk gingerly because it's decorum. And the, uh, we had to be seated at five. The function would begin at six. I stopped drinking liquids from four o'clock. Yes. There was no more water. Your throat feeling dry, swallow. <laughs> because... Honey, you know. Well, I know some of y'all dying laughing, eh, but like she talking to me. Yes, I'm talking to us. Yes, you're talking to us. And I'm telling you, yes. And I think it was when I put the last statement, well, I was only seeing LOLs coming from the other members. Make sure when you do the facial, it must not be more than 48 hours before the event. Otherwise, the silver whiskers, you hear me? They come out silver, brighter, because it's like springtime for them. And you, if you forgot the compact in your purse with the tweezer, you will feel embarrassed because you know those silver ones will come here. They will come here and we like to laugh plenty and all that. Eh? Just as you turn in your neck, you will see them. <laughs> this is part of the preparation and we would and you know what look at all of us we laughing at ourselves because we know it's true and as one of the ones who i wrote it to was in her 80s she said jen i i practice i'm i'm a graduate now <laughs> i'm a graduate and so it's about that dignity because we have come from an era of style and therefore, yeah. even though we are aging with this dignity and grace, we remain in style. And by that, we don't necessarily mean what is in vogue, you as I call it, but what is not only amenable, but, but radiates who you are. Yeah. You're comfortable in it, you know? And so therefore, it tones down the vanity that you would be doing this for who will be looking at you. No, no. It's a you and you. 
you on you and you feel good and you step accordingly and everything else will fall in place. You follow? <laughs> so that was the little snapshot. Now, when I got this award or when I, I was advised, you know, I've been nominated for an award, a national award, that was since in August. So I was, I just happened to have come in and answered this strange number. And the lady said, well, she's calling from the committee so-and-so. And, -so, and um, if this is my name, and I said, yes, she said, well, you have been nominated. So I get confused. So which award? She said, well, so, 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 so. I say, you sure is me. I said, because right now, my wee's meek. Not my knees, eh? my wee's meek. <laughs> <laughs> and she started to laugh. Because she said, no, when I'm announcing this, the most of the awardees, they, they just get, they pummeling me with questions. I say, no. But after that simple part, I sat down and, you know, it, the first thing that resonated with me was my dad. Mm -hmm. He has been an educator all of his life. I am my father's child. I mean, there's no question of it. The smiling while I speak and that part of it, that's my mom. But he was a man where we enjoyed reading. As a baby, I saw him always read the last thing at night and he will read till maybe one and two in the morning so reading came easily to me I never had a problem and I, I will be falling asleep and getting bored no and then he was always there like a tomato steak when mama now is reading all this time I'm about five and six when she's in the kitchen kneading bread and so she would have me read to her my storybooks Enid Blyton um Aesop's fairy tales yeah. and I'm reading this to her while she's doing that and then she would stop it stop me intermittently to ask me a question that is syntax that is comprehension to know if I'm just parroting reading and not understanding mm -hmm. and, reading, and you're just on a, on a on a on a um pedestal no 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 she wants to know that you are understanding what you re read and maybe ask you, so what happened when you when so, 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 then if you were just reading in a vacuum, it would not have made sense. Neither my father nor my mother had a degree. They went to no university. They both came out. He was born in 1907. And therefore, he would have experienced two world wars. She was born in 1912. So they knew what scarcity meant. And as a result of which, to be frugal and prudent. Also in that era, because of the wars, fertility was high. So all families had extended their had children. So what was considered the norm was a family with five as a minimum. In ours, I was the last one at nine. And then next door was 12. Opposite was 21. And we were all delivered by midwives. And so there was that communal, as in communalism, that the community really knew all that was happening. And as she said, because of the war, when you had the baby, would give you a stout to drink the mother after delivering to, to boost your energy and the baby because of war and although she's nursing she would also give um split peas that she would puree in the bottle for the babies because i pure protein so all of this in the making of me and my matriarchal or matriarchal mother grandma that's my mother's mother and when she was pregnant with my mother, her husband, which is my mother's father, he was in the Panama Canal dealing with the Suez Canal because they used to take migrants to work in very unsafe conditions, very unhealthy conditions. And at that e in that ethos, communicable diseases were the order of the day. You got them waterborne, airborne, and so tuberculosis, typhoid, wiped out families. So that's how she never knew her dad. He died before she was born. And so that's how she emigrated from Barbados where she, um, she was a pure Bajan and came to Trinidad with ma mama as a, as a baby, a little toddler. So all of that 
where you had nobody coming out of luxury, affluence, that came from our generation, my generation of the baby boomers from 1946 to 64. Because the sacrifices that they had made during their years and all the different movements, remember Pan-Africanism and all of that was happening in the background there. Eh? So they had some real serious revolutionaries who we would not have recognized because they, they look normal and they're not in guerrilla clothes and try to have an image. And it's because of that, when 1970 hit, and we looking at my father, you know, in his three piece and whatever, we saying, you look at that, you know, you, you're dressing European and is that, you know, you have a white brain, but you're black skin, but we ain't telling him that his face. We, we just do reading, not understanding. Mm -hmm. He was the revolutionary in the family. You talk about discipline, speak when spoken to, answer when called. Everything he did was methodical. And so, unknowingly i patterned myself and then when he would go on inspector he was an inspector of schools he will take me with him and i got to know the country and then all the teachers and so and look i became a teacher i was lecturing at ue so i'm just showing where all these little nuggets all these little seeds that were planted along the way clearly and maybe subliminally removed fear removed, this is not for you, removed all the, what would be considered obstacles, like why you would be thinking of doing this? No, it, it was in my path and which I am now calling my play into who I am and the makings of me. So when mama is listening and questioning me, when I'm walking out from the kitchen with the book, feeling proud of myself that I read, daddy is in the living room because he listened and he now will stop me every so often and say, I was listening to you reading to your mother and you said a word there. You said epitome. The pronunciation is epitome. And then later on, you said something was awry. It's awry. Now, who we have doing that now? Who we have doing that? That's a the home. And listen, the home, no TV, eh? this is a wooden, half wooden, half concrete in Takarigo, which we now will call country. Yeah, that's okay. Nobody had walls, eh? no burglar proof. Everybody knew everybody. But because of those, what would now be called distractions, he had, he was very clear on his mandate in raising us. He loved music of all genres. And so, you know, those they come from the ones that you turn with the horn on it, come right down to when we had to now get a little box and a speaker and what have you. But the type of music he allowed, he loved and he sang, he was a tenor, a, a cappella, they sang. And even in courting my mother, he, it was in, no, you're right, it was here. They would go by, they would tell me in Tobago, when you were courting the women, the men, the, the guys would pass when the women are down or washing the, the clothes in the river and they would pelt a little pebble to attract them. And then daddy himself was involved in reading clubs. They had activities that engaged them. They also had Freemasonry. They also had friendly society. No credit union, that was the precursor to credit union. They had Sue Sue. Nobody had to sign any IOU. It was just based on integrity and trust. Because some were functionally illiterate. Mm -hmm. And they don't know about filling out forms and whatever. We, they just know which month is their hand. And when they received that, that gave school uniforms, books, fix your house, do repairs, maintenance from the Susue. Mm -hmm. And the friendly society, which he was a, a major part for, because when he passed away at 92, he was president emeritus of the Good Samaritan Friendly Society, which is still on Duke Street. They were able to buy that building. The, the, annual, the, the annual fee was nine, um, $7. That remained until I was a, a, an adult. No long word, 
misappropriation, the short word, no thiefing, no corruption, no misappropriation of funding. And everybody wrote in, the secretary wrote in a fountain pen in the book for the minutes. That is the base that I came out of. And then he was assistant manager of the Takarigua Orphan Home at the time. And when he saw the effect of the stigma it had on the young, the young ones when they were leaving, he was instrumental in having the name changed to see St. Mary's home, children's home. So all of this, and then we moved to Barataria and what have you. So I had a model. So here in this little household, I had a matriarch who was my grandmother, not my mother, because of her age mm -hmm. and her experience. And you talk about mutual respect, you can chop and say you're walking off and while they speak, are you crazy? So she was in the household and I only knew her with silver hair. She had long silver hair and one tooth and a and wrinkled face. So I knew what old was. Check old now. If you even want to use the word grandma, grandma now is 35. Grandma now is 35. So even if you want to say, well, grandparents look like, boom, no, there is no look. There is no look. Because I was complimenting a girl in RBC recently. I was complimenting her nails and the style it had on it. And she was very flamboyant and so. And I said, boy, youth is a hell of a thing. She said, no, 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 ma'am, Dr. Rao, don't call me a youth. I am a grandmother. I said, you are grandmother? She said, yeah. I said, by the way, between you and me, how old are you? She said, 36. And my daughter is 22. Well, I do the math quick, quick, quick. My daughter is 22 and she has two children. Yes. And I, I say, and she said, yes, and I have three children. She's 22. The next one is 11 and the next one is nine. And she's fluttering like a butterfly. Grandmother, 36. So you understand that we are having now multi-generations in a household sometimes in a household because just how our parents left either a little piece of land or a little property or something and even then when they the ones who wrote wills made sure there was a clause in the will to say under no circumstance is this for sale any of the offspring of any generation that is in need this is the haven that was written look at now yeah but no and you, you know, know you wonder how we reach here boy you know dr Rout, i am i'm glad you you made that point and again yeah. i want to also endorse my personal congratulations in terms sure. of your being awarded the hummingbird medal silver sure. um you know i look at the fact that october 1st yesterday is the international year of elder persons and I'm listening to your story and I'm looking at the theme for that year, aging with dignity, the importance of strengthening care and support systems for older persons worldwide. And you know, you, you, you painted a picture of a world, we used to say it sadly, but it doesn't exist. The, whether it is technology, it's, it's a lot of technology. It's, it's a lot of technology and not only technology, meaning the telephone and the, and the computer. It's just the way we do things. We have washing machines, dishwashers. Um, we, we, have, um, we, we just have vacuum cleaners. We, we have pressure cookers. We, we have now air fryers. Um, we're writing, it's not the fountain pen again, it's the ballpoint pen. And when we think about how technology has caused our lives to be so different to the way our parents and our grandparents had to live. Yeah. You know, you look at the theme the importance of strengthening care and support systems for older persons worldwide. And as you were speaking, 
I just thought, okay, my life is so different in terms of you use the word modeling. Models. There were so many opportunities to practice living well and training children to, to live properly. And I think of today, you have been a pioneer. I want to say you are the pioneer for centering policy on older persons and making sure their quality of life is reasonable and relevant. When you look at your grounding and you think of our cohort, our 50 to 60, who are transitioning from parents, grandparents, and going to the elders, with the technology that is around us, how do we get in those supports, those guidance, especially when we come in our families of two and one child, or when the children have migrated and everybody is all around the world building independent lives. So for us to, to have future hummingbird medal silver participants out of our cohort, mm -hmm. how do we develop those support systems, those guidance systems, given where we are now? And it, it, it could sound as if you are, you are saying a, re, a rhetorical question, but it is a real question. It is a real question. It is very, very real. It is because a real, we don't have the community. <laughs> what we have now is gated communities. You can't just walk in. There's so many cameras seeing you from the time you park in your car. Yes. yes. And there is this, and it becomes now sterile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I remember part of the community with the dogs walking, yes. less cars, it was less hot. Don't, don't forget to bring in climate change. Climate change has also exacerbated the thing. Because I remember my great aunt who was the midwife, granny, mama. They None of them used the odorant. They use um, it's boric powder, something, you no know, amens and then boric powder. And then mama had long hair. She, she washed her hair in rainwater and with aloes. You never smell them. Mm -hmm. But it is because there was not the heat that we get in here now. And the food was also different. The food. Well, are now the, going there. Yeah. And home food. You follow? So when you think of all those things, they were not in and out of the hospital, sick with this, sick with that. And because they grew what they ate and the shearing, don't forget. Mm -hmm. And in parts of Tobago, they still do it. When you wake up, you'll just see a Hannah Green figs in your, in your gallery. Somebody pick and just leave there for you. Mm -hmm. So that's why that word communalism and what I am envisaging and maybe envisioning that you know there is a saying, too far east is west, or too far mm -hmm. west is east. We have almost maxed out full circle, and we're going right back there. Mm -hmm. Because whether we want to dress it up as mentors and mentorship programs, we have to reach back to that, because the universe doesn't make mistakes. By in the year, by 20, between 2025 and 2050, more than 50% of the globe is going to be aged. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. So why, how come the, the universe is conspiring to have this great mass of elders who we would, who would think just sitting home, not waiting to die, but be, look at where technology is, look how we chatting. So it doesn't mean physically you have to move, but you're still getting the information. But you see, with all the AI and the whatever that kind of making us feel um, not insecure, but restless and wondering and fearful, they will never be able to substitute the human voice. Mm -hmm. Remember what Maya Angelou said, our voices are instruments. 
Yeah. When you check the two mega groups that make up Trinidad and Tobago are Indo and Afro. The genesis, the, the, the basis of their communities and their ethnicity was oral tradition. Mm -hmm. The griots did the history orally. You never heard anybody then having Alzheimer's or maybe if they did, they didn't know what it was. They were cared for. They were, they cared, were cared for and integrated. For <laughs> and integrated. But mm -hmm. that storytelling, and which is why when I ended up as a lecturer in, in UE, the way I lectured was story form. Mm -hmm. I didn't just tell you to read a chapter or read two chapters, and then when they come in, I'm on a blackboard just writing out. So what did you find from this chapter? And what they could do that on their own. And it is more and more as I came into that classroom and asked them questions, because remember, education comes from the Latin word educare, to draw out. None of them there is a tabula rasa with a blank slate. No, they came out of something, the bar in the womb, but they came com as a composition of genes and DNA and everything, scripts that are already there. So you have to tease out and feel out and find out what is it you like, you know? Mm -hmm. And this little child might be just thinking that you, and she might blurt it out what she really likes. And some adult will say, that is your ambition. That is all you am aspiring to be. That's where the dumb and dumb begins. Eh? Yeah. Because we start placing the markers, not understanding she could be the, 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 the key to turn in around that very profession that has become or is becoming redundant and make an intervention that will take it to another level. We don't know that because of our foresight being so limited. But every, what I would say in one sentence, the most painful experiences I have had at an emotional level were my best growth spurts. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. How do we walk through those times when you almost feel rock bottom? And this is coming through childhood too. Eh? And what I will give you one reference. When I was in Bishop Anstey High School, I was in there from kindergarten at the age of five. Three quarter of my staff, were, of the teacher, teaching staff, and, and so were British. That is another major part that is in the shaping of me. They were all spinsters. I remember the principal, she had three dresses. And when a formal in invitation, like to, they go into some thing of, she just put on a pearl chain on one of them. And that is it, you know. They wore, and that, I don't think, that, yeah, they wore chunky heels, low heels, and they would have their dog with them. When they walked the corridors of Bishop Anstey, we heard them walk. And it wasn't because the shoes were noisy. It was because the school was quiet. Mm. We just knew there was no noise. Now when you pass in a school, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you don't know if a subject going on. You don't know if it's playtime or whatever because it almost sounds the same. Now, we're not going back to that era. I'm talking about what were my building blocks to mm -hmm. make me there. They had dining room tables when you had for lunch. When you ate, you did not eat a plate that gone in a mountain. And you did not eat one morsel and start drinking. You had water with one block of ice. Look where we reach now, full circle, where they're actually telling you on WhatsApp every day, please, 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 with this heat, do not drink cold, ice cold water. And do not guzzle it, just drink it, sip it, sip it. We reach there, we reach right back there because of how the state of the climate has, has, has now affect, it's affecting us. So when 1970 came, well, all the British and so they were told they have to go now because of the change. And when common entrance now brought in everybody from anywhere, walk of life, any race, any whatever, because, you know, they used to laugh at us. Were you to, why, why are you talking so? Because they thought we were talking funny. We didn't know that we had a British twang. 
for the way our enunciation and pronunciation was because we got it direct from them. Well, it's like the young people today talk in American because they uh, get You realize that? No, but that's, that's how point. they learn. That's what that's they, how they learn. It's repetition. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and although the spelling with the spell check, that is American spell check, we st and yet British is still handling there. All that is the confusion. It's, it's confusing. Mm -hmm. And so, who are we? And in answer to your question too, it means even when we're doing whether the mentoring and whatever, and I will say this because I was at a, a friend, she had her grandchildren, we do not realize we are multilingual. Mm -hmm. We are multilingual. What I wrote in my thesis is not what I'm going to, re going to speak to you now. No. Even in part of one of the chapters I wrote when we, were, when we play mass, I can't remember what chapter it was. The, the professor asked me what church was I in, what mass was I? He, I then realized I had to write out the word masquerade and explain what it is. Mm -hmm. Then I, because remember his policy was my major, when I said now um, Trinidad and, and, and um, Tobago, another part I was writing and I said we felt, Trinidad felt the, the, the quake of some seismic shift we were making in our they told me policy has no feelings. Mm. So you cannot use sensate words. So you said Trinidad and Tobago experienced. So you see how you're getting clinical already. Good and technical. Now, what that raised in me, we as Caribbean people are sensate. Mm -hmm. The way we cook, the way we talk, the way we sing, the way we dance, the way we walk. It's in our DNA. Mm. When we talk, look how I talk, and you only see in my hands. That's why some, well, you know, the partners I have, they say, Rouse, if I hold your hand, I'll show you, don't get quiet. <laughs> because they see a direct connection with the hand movement and what you're saying. And another little friend of mine who went to Juilliard to do drama as her degree. You know what they were teaching them on the in the first part of the first bachelor's degree? How to speak animated. Well, she busts out a laugh. She said, but if you go in our market, the vendors, everybody doing it normal, normal, like put down, you remember how Keynes Douglas said? Put down that fish, you only feeling up, feeling up, come over it. Only hands. <laughs> we don't stand up and stand with our hands at our side speaking. No. And that's what gives the color. It gives the, 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 the it gives the movement. That's how Malcolm X also said, if you want to know a woman, what see how she dances, you know? Because we move with that current. And so to do that policy that was cool, and even when now I started this mission, which I didn't have on my template, to be director of the Division of Aging. I remember giving a, a presentation at UE um, at, on the invitation of Health Economics Unit. And afterwards, the head of the unit, um, Dr. Carl Theodore, say, you know, Dr. Rose, I must, I must mention this. Whenever I listen to you present, you humanize policy. He said, because policy is cold, but you bring an energy with it in trying to explain because all I know is I'm a trinity to the bone and a home talking to my people and they will understand it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to, 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 to act it out, but it, it it is understood so much more easily and more pal in a, a more palatable form when they see, as we say, one are we talking to me like we. Yes, that's who we are. So and, and when I look, and I will say this last point, Jen. So when I saw, when my father told me at, the, at 19, when I left Bishop Amstey, what are you going to, when are you go? which university are you going to study medicine? I look at him, I say, I'm not going to any university. Uh, well, he was like dumbfounded. 
because he had already made provisions that I will be the last and the weekend and I'm going. Because at that time, 1970, 1970 was already in my veins. And hearing CLR James saying that tertiary education is more costly education than higher education. These were all the things that we had here. This is all part of the matrix of who of my stuff. So to him, it was an insult that I turn him down that I'm not going to do medicine. But look at what the world had me shaped for. Jen, now you can say what you were going to say. And, you know, you spoke about the way, you know, when you did policy yeah. and definitely you are known for person who's very relatable. People just love you for that. They can understand when you speak. I just want to go because I know we could talk here. We could bring you back every week for the month. <laughs> I just want and we say saying that in a good way. <laughs> yes. Listen, all the points, it is key. And, and we, you know, it is so important to us on this stage. You know, I just want you to tie in, in terms of policy, being the early director, you know, dealing with policy and aging, etc. I just want to know to tie it in a bit here where you said we come full circle. We come full circle. And that experience, I mean, what we went through going up and you shared, you know, all the very, very positive effect you know, your parents had on you. But now that we are here and many of us still be confused, we frustrated and we don't seem to be able to embrace our achievements, our experience. Many of us like don't see it as positive. We still grumble that here we are, we should have had this, we should have done that and not seeing the great lessons, you know, that we would have learned. You know, and we are different stages. We have achieved differently. But somehow I think we are not able to embrace it enough and to apply those lessons to help, as you say, to help with the support system, which is what is our celebration this year. How can we use our experiences, our achievement, appreciate it, and use it to help build the community and support each other at this stage, understood that stage. I don't know if I, I can yeah, you know, explain. Yeah. It's, you said it well. The first thing is you cannot give what you don't have. So before yeah. you even begin trying to share and raise awareness and whatever, check yourself. Where are you in the equation? And sometimes that kind of tugs at me when I listen to some presenters who are clearly not in sync with the topic, with, with, with what they are presenting. They're not in sync with it. In other words, it was, a, it was a presentation I have to do for this audience. But they never saw themselves as crafters and framers of it from that inner inner self they never and one way another philosophy says it when you cannot see yourself in them speaking of the seniors now and the juniors when you can't see yourself in them and them in you you miss a whole chapter you follow and so the, the, the ease with which you could be less stressed on your own self beside as you say making it story like Everything that tugs you or touches you or triggers you before lashing out and just reacting, step back. Yeah. Step back. Go to me. You see that? Go to me. You had to go to me first. You have to go to me first. And it must be with a rabid honesty. Rabid. If you're not too sure, recognize that wait now like i and like i am making sense whatever it is is the language in yourself and you agree that you need an external voice to really let you know you feel you cut out for this because i, I in other words based on all that we spoke of i i, I live the serenity prayer 
it's not just something I'm hanging on a wall. Give me the courage to accept what I cannot change. So that is why the goal to me has to be so clear because you can't have here muddled, confused. This is the, the mind space. Thinking down the road, what if, what if? And then you're studying, oh God, if only. That is the regrets. Regrets, that happened already, that gone. Nothing you can do could change that. So you have to reach to that point of accepting, you know, that God. What what could I take? What's the nugget I could take out there? And you try to study what was what was your reaction to that? And some people in the coping mechanisms or, or shortcut way will say, you see that? I don't even want to talk about that. I buried that. But they didn't really bury it with a with a, a, a transition as if, well, you know, let me rest that. Let me move on and see what's ahead. No, it's still churning at a cellular level. Just the mere mention of the name of the person or the or, or the situation triggers in them cold sweat. They just break out again in angst. So coming out of that, you have to find your inner peace. That serenity prayer says, listen, the things you can't change, those are gone. Courage to accept. Give me the serenity to accept. And then the courage now to change the things that you can. And the wisdom to know the difference between the ones you can change and the ones you can't change. That, in summary, is emotional intelligence. Because I think now that I'm older and getting so much more okura with this frame and this body that I carry, because it's going to leave me. I have to shed it. But I carry it for now. This is a marvelous instrument designed in the image and likeness of, I don't even call it just a God or whoever, but just some divine presence that no man can make any one of us. And, they, and we have no co carbon copy here. You're unique. The body can heal itself. And as I get to know these little nuggets more and more, you realize, wait, after I was sweating myself over, so, 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 look at this thing. You just had to quiet, 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 and listen. Because it really is a still small voice, you know. It's very simple. And a, and, and a foreigner, I was at a retreat, a yoga retreat, and a foreigner mentioned it when, they, when the facilitator said, how do you think you all will recognize when it is intuition as opposed to the ego speaking? And very succinctly, she said the ego is noisy and intuition is quiet. Interesting. Quiet and clear. It doesn't give you a paragraph. It just gives you a sentence. Like, try this. Why don't you just try this? A sentence oh. that you tend to argue with. When you start to answer back, <laughs> you know. The ego will yeah, drive you to rationalize and give every reason why you shouldn't. When intuition is prompting you and say, Jen, you're ready for the next level, you know. You feeling it in your gut, you know. But guess what? You went and talk out of timing. You yeah. went to somebody who is a hater, who is a pessimist who have no vision of where they seem to be growing. So because once they reach as us as retirees, they just feel growing. What are you talking about growing, girl? Where are you going now with my old self? Uh -huh. So misery love company now. When you feel in a surge inside of you that we could do more, we could go more. As a, as a little WhatsApp said, um, the caterpillar, the caterpillar felt that his life ended, not knowing he was now going to fly. Not knowing he got to a whole other level. Mm -hmm. That's where we are on that cusp. In other words, we're on the edge. We're on the edge. And mind you, Jen, us in the 70s, not the little young one, Terry Ann, she ain't there yet. <laughs> but the, us in the 70s, we now in midlife. The lifespan is 120. I Hello. am dead. <laughs> We now dancing. I'm telling you, we now begin to dance. So all of that, 
that we are swirling in and how in answer to your question you impart in that you have to own own it not yeah. just believe in it as theory no you live in it mm -hmm. and so just as mahatma gandhi said model the change that you want to see or you want to be because Deepak Chopra also say we have become so human doings rather than human beings. But just to be requires that space. It's not a place anymore. It's a space. Mm -hmm. And we all know it through intuitive guidance because the, it eventually what happens is the intuition could then advise the intellect. That is where you have to reach at the edge. Where the intellect could say, you know, you know, so, 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 you know, but check your audience. Are they ready for what you would like, for what intuition telling you to see? They would feel lost so quickly. And this happening and this way, all your transmitters fire in it to tell you, you know this. Yeah, knowing it is one thing, but the readiness of who you're going to speak it with. You just have to now make a switch. And not speak to the person as if they're a child. You're not parenting anybody. But you're just now understanding you're empathic. You're speaking from having known this. You feel for them. Because you know what, what keeps me humble? When I know how many years of reading, how many years of toiling in the vineyard, how many years of feeling like a salmon swimming upstream, eh? That ability not to give up because you're feeling like a little drumbeat. No, 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 no. You can't give up now. You are quite a Stalin. You reach too far now. You can't turn back now. You have to keep going because you're not sure where it's leading. And you have this current. It's a current of energy. On another occasion, I will speak with you all on how you tap into it. Because that energy is there all the time, eh? Mm -hmm. along your spinal column, giving you the ability to speak to, 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 to gallery with all the senses. But then when you realize now, as you get older, you have to manage these senses, manage them because they like wild horses. They could take you all over the place and you want to now control them to a point where they are manageable. Mm -hmm. Not everything. And you're telling me about, oh God, Dr. Rouse, I know what to ask you to tell me what, what regimen you're using to clean your gut and all of these things. But girl, when the black cake call, I swear. Or when I'm doing the pork and I roast it, the pork, oh God, give me a little break, give me a little break, right? And it's not a question of, I don't want that. And I no longer eat that. Eventually your body tells you, mm -hmm. there will come a time when you say, you know, you need a little sweet. You need a little sweet. It don't mean you have to indulge for ad infinitum. And you take your little sweet because you must have balance in that system. When now you begin your own path to being your best version, you have to be the thing that you now impart into who are your little mentees or whoever. It mustn't look laborious. Like, you know, you're, you're struggling with this. No, you have to keep joy in it. You have to keep joy in it. And stay, stay nice, stay nice. Don't beat up on yourself. Just say, you see today, this knee ain't feeling good now. Like when I walk into the toilet, I hear in the knee. So you see me? No, I ain't walking in the savannah this morning. And you cool it. <laughs> Don't choke. <laughs> Don't choke. Because some have it in their mind. I have to walk every morning. No. Maybe to just cut this. <laughs> Embrace. Truly embrace what it takes to self-regulate our own selves, to implement and practice the experience yeah. of your own growth, your template that you have made to be your best version, and you are working at it. If you know how humbling that is and how much more considerate you become inadvertently yeah, to whoever you are mentoring, or whoever you are engaging with to try and raise their bar because you have walked it and you know how it felt, what you had to go through to restrain yourself from just reacting as Terry Ann said, and you're only reactive instead of acting in your space because the notion, the trigger or whatever says you need to make an intervention here. You get the prompt. And you do just enough, just enough. 
all those are the guidance that comes from your intuition. You don't have to say Dr. Rouse could talk, yes, because she done so no, it in all of us. We are at yeah. all different levels, at all different stages of that continuum. It's a continuum. We are just at different stages so that anyone go reach here could speak very clearly and self-assuredly to somebody who is here. Because you would say, girl, is start off being sober. By the time you do a little ting ting and you do the to do to, you will see how you get for it, you know, without making it, without simplifying the journey. Because it is in the effort. It is in the effort that you make. I get it? You see, I've given all your all my little diamonds, eh? all my little yeah. gems. It is in the effort. Is when you just decide, you see me? Nah, this taken. Nah, you can't go there. You just have to say, let me try this one more time. You follow? And it is that energy of, of, of exerting and knowing you're not doing it for an exam. This is you on you. The time is yours to, to drop off, to come back on. And it is in the persistence and perseverance you become now that version. And others will recognize it. Eh? Like Jen, girl, they will be calling you, Terry, what is you doing different? They notice it. They notice it immediately. And the moment they ask what it is they have to do, I will end by saying the distance between your version of yourself and your reality of where you are is discipline. I will end with wow. that. Just three eyes. Good. I love it. And I just love what's taking me is acting in your space. There you go. That's the word. Act. Not react. Act. Your space. This is my space. Correct. Uh, Own it. Own it. Yes. Excellent. No, well, we, as usual, Dr. Rob, it's always a huge pleasure chatting with you. And again, this has been almost an hour we've been talking. So, again, and you know that, we, we, you know we're not on full throttle. On Sorry. behalf of Connections Plus, this 5.8G cohort, we're so very proud to know that you have been recognized nationally and especially because of your work as an advocate for older persons, especially right. because of that, and all the innovations you've done by leading the division of aging and so many, I think, policy pieces and programs, yes. which we see today available for older persons, have a genesis in your work and in your being. Yeah. So congratulations and thank, thank you. you sincerely once again You're very well welcome. deserved <laughs> well well <put>. oh, <laughs> thank okay. you good thank hi tribe did you ever think of doing your autobiography it's not as complicated as you think so join 5.8 g as we, together with Dr. Lynette Tyson Noel, a certified guided autobiographer, as we journey into the world of writing our stories. Scribe with the Tribe is a three part series that lets us write our stories. And there are so many reasons to do this. Jennifer, what do you think? It's a great idea, and I'm all excited to do my autobiography. That's because, you know, it's a way for me to document my life story and leave a legacy for my loved ones. It will also help, you know, those who see me as a mentor to learn more about me and to get some golden nuggets. It, I see it too as a way to motivate our 5.8G tribe to celebrate their greatness, mm -hmm. to start to document their life story and really have that legacy for their loved ones. Great. You know, and I also think that our cohort, we have done so much with such great impact like no other generation has before. Time has flown so fast that we've hardly had any time to look back, to admire, or even to understand all that we have achieved for ourselves and our loved ones. I call that our greatness. So 
I am taking the opportunity through this series to tell my greatness story. It will be a wonderful gift to myself. The opportunity to document my life's journey in my own words, and then I choose to share it with whom I choose. I think that's a great thing. So, Jennifer, tell us more about the series. Okay, our three-part series will be held on Tuesday the 8th and Tuesday the 15th of October. And our final, uh, final session will be on Monday the 21st of October. Now it's from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Zoom platform. So register now. Call me, Jennifer, at 685-8834. And of course, Terri-Ann also at... 682-9202. And check out all of our social media platforms and our 5.8 GLI show. So we look forward to seeing you. Call us. Yes. Subscribe to try. Hey, Ryan, I, I don't have much to say again on it. I mean, really and truly, it is a, our pleasure to have Dr. Rouse, you know, back with us again. And especially having, you know, just recently been awarded, you know, given a national award. Um, so yeah. So nothing else to add to spoil that great interview. Great. All you add is from her telling her story that we want to encourage you to come on board and write your story. Right. And as we go through this month, you'll be here. Apart from writing your own story with our Scribe with the Tribe, we will be bringing on other people to give their legacy story and their greatness story. So we can all celebrate this month of, we'll call it the month of the older persons. <laughs> they are older persons. I know. You see. Holiday. Great. Yeah. So see you next week. Bye. <laughs> 50 plus tribe and follow us from Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Thank you for joining us on this Connections 50 plus 5.8 G Alive show. We hope you enjoyed the lively conversation <laughs> and look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really love getting your feedback. Bye, Bye for now. now.